Welcome everyone to our fourth side tier chat for January. I am so happy to welcome the Arizona Cardinals cheerleaders. For those of you that don't know, I'm side chair Samantha, and I was also an Arizona Cardinals cheerleader as well as an engineer. So today we have Darby, a trauma and emergency nurse, Coley, a nutrition and health coach, and Ashley, a speech and language pathologist, all from Arizona Cardinals. And we're going to talk about their work in STEM as well as their experience as cheerleaders. And we'll get to their introductions in just a few minutes. After that, I'm going to take you guys through a really fun citizen science activity that you can do at home and all the materials that you need to go ahead and do that. Uh, if you have any questions for the Cardinals cheerleaders, please, please comment on the Facebook live post and we will do a live Q&A at the end of our session. I would like to introduce to you the Cardinals. Well, everyone. All right, let's start with Darby. Can you tell us a little bit about your background in STEM and your cheer background? Yeah, so hi everyone. My name is Darby and like Samantha said, I'm an Arizona Cardinals cheerleader and I just wrapped up my fifth season. So that's kind of my cheer dance background. I grew up in dance studios and then I came to the Cardinals. But my science background, I am a registered nurse and I work in a level one trauma center emergency department. Um, and then I'm also a master's degree student. So I am getting my master's in nurse practitioning, um, family nurse practitioning. And there I've been doing research. And so, yeah, my background is in healthcare type science. That's interesting. So what interested you in science and healthcare? Yeah, so I grew up with a lot of family that works in healthcare. Um, my mom does, you know, care for animals. So she's a veterinarian, so different type of care. But I always knew that I wanted to go into healthcare and care for patients and their families. And during school, growing up in elementary school, I always loved science and I loved anatomy and physiology. And I just loved seeing how the human body worked. And so when I went to school originally, I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to get into, but I knew that I wanted to be at the bedside with the patient. And for me, that that was nursing. And so I got into nursing and yeah, I've been a nurse now for almost seven years. So I'm really glad that I you know, picked that career path. That's awesome. Congratulations. Over to Ashley. Can you tell us a little bit about your background in STEM and in Sure. sure. Um, I competed as a competitive dancer my whole life. I fell in love with in about second grade, and I just knew that I wanted to pursue dance in college. So I was a Kilgore College Rangerette. Then I went on to my undergrad degree at Florida State University. I cheered on the FSU Golden Girls dance team there. Then I went on to be an Atlanta Falcons cheerleader and then on to being an Arizona Cardinals cheerleader for five years now. So I've had a pretty extensive dance career. It's been a huge part of my life, but an even bigger part of my life has been wanting to help people and wanting to improve their quality of life. I um, grew up with a mom who is a chemical engineer. She's retired now, but I've always just loved being around her and watching her brain work. She's always inspired me through math and science. And I also grew up with a brother with special needs. So he has always inspired me in different ways. And I always knew that I wanted to work with the special needs population, helping others, and of course, pursue my love of science. So I just felt like speech pathology was the calling for me. And I absolutely love my job. That's awesome to hear. How about Holly? Tell us about your background. Hi everyone, thanks for having us today. Uh, my name's Coley and just to share a little bit about my background. So I, um, same thing, grew up dancing in the studio ever since I was little. Um, I was a cheerleader in high school, so also did cheer and dance. And I went to Grand Canyon University where I danced there collegiately for four years. And that's where I really found my passion for um, science. And it just really all connected for me that 
uh, nutrition and health education was my passion. I love the aspect to be able to do preventative health and to really work with others on what they put into their body and how it just gives them ultimately um, health overall and just to more longevity. And so that's kind of where everything came full circle for me. That's awesome. And I feel like nowadays, health and nutrition is so important as we're trying to fight all these diseases and the pandemic going around. So it's a very timely thing to know about. So Coley, what what's your favorite thing about science and working with nutrition? That's a great question. I would say ultimately in nutrition and health education, you have the ability to make those choices of what um, foods you feel for your body. And I always like to think about it just in a cheer aspect that if we're not fueling our body properly, we're not going to be able to perform to our best ability. And so just to be able to give that to other people in life, if they want to run a marathon, if they want to be around longer for their kids, um, just to be able to be preventative about making healthy choices is something that's so rewarding to watch others um, do in my career. So, so true. Uh, Ashley, what about working in speech pathology and working in science? How does that connect to what you've learned working in cheer or being a cheerleader? Is that fair? So one thing that I've really learned about people is different ways that we learn. I rely a lot on diving into the research because every person is different, every disorder is different, and every person comes from a different background. Not every person learns the same and really learning those different techniques into how to implement different strategies to make them improve is really the core of what I do. I think that it's really helpful because I think I have a lot of good mind body awareness from being a dancer and learning, um, knowing that I learn visual kinesthetically as opposed to someone who might learn just auditorily. Those different types of learners are things that, you know, if I'm teaching a dance, I know that I can teach it in a way because I do have the science background of knowing how the brain works, knowing how people are learning. And I think that it makes me you know, much better at my job as a speech therapist and as a cheerleader as well. That's awesome. That's a really cool connection that not everyone gets to have. Darby, how about for you? How does being a cheerleader benefit you in healthcare and vice versa? Yeah. So like I said, I, I work in a level one trauma center emergency department. So it is a very stressful job. And so it's been nice to have an outlet outside of my job as a nurse, you know, during stressful times, especially during COVID, just having a way to express myself. But two, there's other aspects of dance and cheerleading and being on a team that aren't just the dancing. And so dance has really given me confidence and that confidence has then carried over into my job. I can be confident in the work that I'm doing. And two, as cheerleaders, we go to a lot of community events where you're meeting people that you've never met before. And so it really has taught you how to engage with people and how to communicate well with people that you've never met before and how to understand them better. And so I can kind of take those skills that I've learned from cheer and dance into my career as a nurse because, I mean, nursing, you're communicating all day long to patients and their families. And now with COVID, there's visitor restrictions. And so a lot of it is done on the phone. And so it really has taught me how to communicate well with others, um, you know, as well as gain confidence and, you know, be able to work in a team setting. So true. I think communication is such a big lesson that's unexpected, but so helpful that you learn just being a professional cheerleader. That's awesome. So I definitely want to hear from all of you about, has there ever been a time in your career, either in STEM or in, in cheer, where you face adversity, or stereotypes and how you broke through those. So let's start with Darby. Yeah, so every day in my career, making decisions, you know, that could really change someone's life. So there's a lot of autonomy in emergency nursing. And so a lot of big decisions are made. And so something that I always tell myself is that I have to do the absolute best that I can do with the information that I have. And that's the best that I can do. And so I always tell myself, you know, I have to put my best foot forward and make hard decisions. Um, but, you know, on top of that, 
When I first started in the emergency department, I was 21 years old and they had never hired a new graduate nurse into that department. So I was the first really young, fresh nurse that had ever worked there. And it's a huge emergency department. And when I first started working there, a lot of patients and a lot of other nurses would tell me, oh, you know, you look so young to work here. Or, oh gosh, you're really young, you're a new grad. And so I really felt like I had something to prove, which I almost think pushed me to work even harder to kind of prove that although I am young and I am the first person to be able to do this, I can work really hard and I can learn and I can be taught and I can be a good coworker and I can be helpful. And so I think that was one of my biggest you know, challenges when I was starting was just being so young. And I also, I looked really young too. And so for patients, you know, they were even wondering why there was a 21 year old taking care of them, but it really did push me to be a better nurse. That's awesome. Ashley, how about you? Has there been anything you've overcame as a cheerleader or a STEM professional? Yes, absolutely. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I cheered for the Falcons um, a couple years ago, and I knew that once I got a taste of cheering in the NFL, I just wasn't to pursue my career, I did have to go to grad school and I got into grad school out here in Arizona. So I decided to, you know what, why not try out for the Arizona Cardinals cheerleaders and see if I make it. I and mean, either way, I have to go to grad school. So um, whenever I made the team, I went to my professors and I told them, hey, I just wanted to let you know, I cheer for the Cardinals. If I miss it, you know, Thursday night, you know, it's we have a Thursday night practice or a Thursday night football game, Monday night football game. It's not that I'm cutting class. It's not that I'm not going to be prepared. It's mostly that I do this outside job and I'm just here to kind of let you know. That was kind of the protocol they had us take in college um, with cheering at, you know, school sponsored ends. So I thought I was being really proactive in letting my professors know that I had this outside job. And I was really surprised that they were not very supportive of me being a cheerleader on top of being in the grad school program because they just said it would be very time consuming, very cognitively demanding. And I was kind of taken aback by that. And I was like, I'm not here to ask you if I should do this or if I can do this. I'm here telling you that I am. And I've balanced cheer and dance and school my entire life. And I don't see what the difference is now. And I'm going to continue to try to do this. If, you know, cheer and dance gets in the way of my academics, I put those first and foremost, and that's not something that I take lightheartedly. You know, I want to cheer and dance while I do, um, you know, learn and pursue my master's degree. But if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But I, I want to try. And I ended up cheering the entire time I was in grad school. I graduated um, in 2018. I completed my clinical fellowship year. And I actually was voted on by my professors as um, going above and beyond. And I received the award of clinical excellence at our banquet. And I really feel that maybe they didn't believe in me that I could balance both. Or maybe they thought, you know, this is really time consuming. She doesn't look like she you know, knows what this is all about or, you know, she wants to go cheer. I don't know what stereotypes they were really putting on me, but I just knew that I had to break through them and I had to push through them. And similar to Darby said, you know, when you're faced with adversity like that, it really is a huge motivator. And I felt like nothing could stop me. And I just knew I had to prove them wrong. And I feel like I really did. Totally. That's awesome. And congratulations. That's really inspiring to hear. And it just goes to show you how important it is to have support and be able to believe in yourself that you can still go to school or still work in that field as well as you know make time for cheer practice and and balance everything if you had any advice for someone who maybe wasn't getting that support from either their teachers or their family what would you say to them about i guess pursuing both stem and cheer well, I would say it, in my experience, it was a little bit um, unbalanced because, of course, the Cardinals organization really was supportive that we all have full time jobs or that we're all full time students. And so I was really getting that support and push from there as I had the same support on Falcons as well. They have the same expectations of us. Um, and I really think that 
not getting supported in that way kind of showed me wait, I really need to, you know, buckle up and, you know, really prove them wrong. I think that, like Darby said, dance really was a real outlet for me. And I knew that when I walked into practice, I could leave my worries about academics or about, you know, anything I was worrying about at the door. I could just come in and do what I wanted, do what I loved and not have to think about it. Those problems and those things that I would worry about would be there when I left practice. So really separating those two aspects and giving your time, yourself time to have a creative outlet, to have a, you know, a physical outlet whether it be working out or any sort of thing that you truly enjoy, it's really important to make time for yourself and to balance those things. And if you can't find support, support yourself, you know, believe in your own self and you can do anything that you set your mind to. That's such great advice. I love it. And Coley, what about for you? Have you, has there ever been a time where you face adversity or stereotypes or as a cheerleader? Yes, definitely. Um, a time that comes to mind is kind of similar to um, COVID right now, how a lot of people have lost their jobs just due to how, you know, our whole world is changing. And um, back at a previous company, we went through um, a financial um, trying time and they actually cut our whole nutrition department. And just finding out that news in the moment was just really hard, but to be able to instead of turning it into a negative situation, just to really think about it and say that when one door closes, one door opens. And I am a firm believer of that. And I think that it really helped build me into where I am today in my career. And I'm so incredibly, so incredibly grateful for having that experience at that time. And I think it just taught me a lot to just looking for what is my true passion and how am I going to get myself there? And just like Ashley said that you need to support yourself 100%, whatever is it that you believe in just to go for that. And um, it was so refreshing to be able to come to practice and just to have a team full of sisters that just support you and no matter what you want to do. So just going through that experience overall really got me to where I am today. Awesome to hear. Uh, Coley, if you had to give a piece of advice to any of the kids watching us today, what would that be? That's a great question. I would say that as us individuals, we have the power to chase whatever dream that is. If you want to be a cheerleader, if you want to be in STEM, if you want to be, you know, a scientists, whatever that is, that you have the ultimate power to be able to make that happen. So if you believe in yourself, if you work hard, you put in, you know, the time and the dedication that you really will be surprised at how successful that you will be. And a quote that I really like kind of being in um, the nutrition field is a dream does not come become reality through magic. It takes sweat, determination, and hard work. And I am a firm believer of that. And I think we've seen that a lot in cheer as well through a lot of sweat and a lot of determination that um, we're here for being here today. Love it. What would be your advice to the audience today? My advice would just be to find your passion and go for it wholeheartedly. You can have more than one passion and you are able to change whatever it is that you don't like about your life into whatever you want your life to be. You're the ultimate creator of your life. And if you have enough passion, enough motivation, enough drive, you don't need all the resources. You can have people, you can find different ways of making those means happen. And I think that it's important to allow yourself grace, to have those creative outlets, to you know give yourself time and tell yourself, I am doing enough, I am enough, and I can do this as well. You know, maybe I didn't do this right today, but tomorrow, guess what? I've learned from it and that's, I'm one step closer to being even better than I already was. That's awesome advice. I love it. How about you, Darby? What would your advice be? Yeah, kind of similar to what Coley was saying. My advice would just to be always give 100% effort. So whether you are auditioning for a cheer team or you're going for a job or you're applying to a school or really in any aspect of your life, if you go into it knowing that you gave 110% and you poured 
everything you had into it. If you get told no or you don't make it, you won't regret it, but you will regret knowing that maybe I didn't prepare well enough or maybe I didn't really pour myself into something that I'm really passionate about. So I think just always, you know, if you're passionate about something, 110% effort into it. And the worst that you can get told is no, but you know that you put your best foot forward and then you can only go up from there and you can only improve from there. So don't ever let a no bring you down. Always be really well prepared and, you know, really follow your passions because it's so true that you can truly do anything that you put your heart and soul into. Such great advice. And I think one of the things I've learned from all of the cheerleaders that I've met is that we all have persevered through a lot. I know it takes a lot to get through any sort of science education and um, you guys are great for pushing through and making sure you get there. And even being a cheerleader, we get told to all the time people miss auditions um, or don't don't make the cut and just persevering and practicing and really working on yourself and getting to that next level is so impressive. So great job, everyone. So in a second, I'm going to have Side Chair Wendy uh, pull up a fun citizen science activity for us. So while we're doing that, if you guys have questions for the Cardinals cheerleaders, please, please comment down below and we will get those answered at the end of our session. So Wendy, if you want to pull up Globe at Night, and for everyone who's new to our side share chat, citizen science is a way for everyday citizens to engage in actual science research. So today I want to demonstrate one of the projects on our sister company, SciStarter. And the reason for this is that one of the main researchers is actually from Arizona. So going with the theme of Arizona, I chose a to show you guys how everyone watching here can be a scientist. Doesn't matter your age, doesn't matter where you live, you can go ahead and do this. So as you can see on the Globe at Night website, there's tons of instructions and ways to get involved. All you need is a computer and website education slash globe dash at dash night dash education. I know it's a mouthful, um, but you can also just Google SciStarter Globe at Night and you'll get here. You'll see all the materials needed, internet, computer, or smartphone, and that's it. And all of the steps are here. So all you'll do is you'll sign up to participate and they will walk you through a five question questionnaire. Essentially, you go out at night after dinner, when it's dark out, and you look at the stars. And each question will guide you on what the stars look like, what's the weather like that day, and based on how the stars look and the weather, you submit your data, and then you're a scientist. It's as easy as that. So the goal of Globe at Night is this is an international citizen science project to raise public awareness for the impact of light pollution. So by inviting all of you guys outside to measure and submit the brightness of the night sky at your hometown, we can all get involved and we can all impact the research around how light pollution affects the stars and affects how we see the world. So it's a really cool project. And on SciStarter, if you want to check out some more projects, you can search by interest, by age, by location, and you'll find tons of other ways to be a scientist. So I hope you guys all join in. All right, so audience questions. So the first question we have is, what advice do you have for how to support an aspiring science cheerleader scientist? So it sounds like this person wants to support someone who's pursuing STEM or cheer. What would your advice be to those supporters? I, that was a really great question. I would say that um, you should definitely find whatever it is that makes you 
you know, tick, whatever that passion is. If it's a certain area of science, for Coley, it's diet and nutrition. For Darby, it's health and science. For me, it's speech science and helping special needs populations. Whatever it really is for you that makes you passionate and makes you really want to pursue further um, into the research and doing things like going out and doing observations or shadowing people that really just gets you one step closer every single time i went and shadowed an audiologist when i was debating if i wanted to be a speech therapist or an audiologist because with my degree i could go either way and i went out into the field i shadowed audiologists and i was like you know what i'm really glad i did this because although it was kind of a no for me like I knew I was one step closer to finding my dream job and to finding my passion. And I really do think that there is something out there for everybody. And my dad always says that if you find the perfect job, you'll never work a day in your life. Uh, awesome. And kind of going off of that, like with support, with things like that too, you know, if you have a family or a friend that wants to be in a STEM career or does want to be a cheerleader, I think just verbally believing in them. There are so many people that when I was in nursing school or when I was auditioning for Cardinals that were so supportive of me and they would send me nice text messages. And although it seems so small, I think it can be easy to get overwhelmed when you're really busy in a STEM career or if you're trying to do both. So I just think, you know, if you're that family member, just be really supportive and just let them know how proud you are of them and Give them grace if they need some time off to study or if they need to prepare for if they're doing cheer just to give them that grace but just honestly telling someone that you're there to support them and connecting them with people in the field if you happen to know someone i think those are really important things to do i would touch on that as well as far as support if you're supporting a family member or a friend just to be able to show up at their event if they're involved in cheer or dance if you can just show up and watch them for that performance or show up to their science fair it just goes a long way as far as actions so just to be able to bring be present is something that they probably would really appreciate all such great advice and Coley, yeah, i remember even just giving my thesis at school and my friend showed up for me and it was amazing. You know, just being there is really helpful. So it's such great advice. Uh, we have another audience question. What is your favorite part of having a career in STEM? My favorite part about having a career in STEM is that um, I get to help people every single day. I get to help typical kids who just might have a lisp or a stutter. I also get to help really um, involved kids who might have other disorders or cognitive issues. And I really feel like it brightens my horizons and it teaches me patience. It teaches me how to work with others and it teaches me to give them grace and to celebrate the little wins. I think that celebrating those little things is huge in life. And I just think that that is one of the biggest, most rewarding parts of my job. I use my speech science and the research and everything that I know in order to make it practical and to make it fun for my students. And I really think that that is one of the reasons that I am so successful in treating these disorders because everything I do is evidence-based, but I also try to put my own cheer positive, you know, spin on it. So I really think that that makes it really engaging for my clients. My favorite part of having a career in STEM, and I, I always say this answer and I always feel like it sounds cheesy, but truly similar to what Ashley said is that I love that I am able to help people and truly help people. Every day at my work, there are truly life changing decisions and, uh, you know, different events that happen. And I love that patients, you know, they are trusting me in their most vulnerable, oftentimes the worst day of their life. And I love that I'm able to, you know, actively be able to participate in their care and, you know, really change the trajectory of their life and in a positive way. And especially this year, with everything that's gone on in the world, I feel like this was the time that nurses really needed to show up and they needed to help care for the country and educate people and care for people and, you know, really 
put themselves out there and work as hard as they can. And so I love that I've been able to positively impact the world with kind of everything that's going on by being able to have the background in nursing. I really feel very thankful this year that I did pick a nursing career and a nursing path because I was really able to truly help people in this time. And that's something that really humbles me. And it's also something that makes me really proud to be a nurse, just all the other work that's going on in the world and all the science and all the research that goes in. And, you know, a lot of those researchers are also nurses. And so I'm just really proud of, you know, all the science that's gone on this year and all the different nurses in the world that have really been making a difference. I would say that my favorite part of having a STEM career is to be able to help people as well, but really from a different perspective of goals and dreams that they've always had and maybe have never thought that they could accomplish and just, um, you know, getting rid of those roadblocks in their life that they didn't never thought was possible. And just for um, an individual after reaching their goal to look back in their rear view mirror and see everything that they've accomplished along the way and hopefully leading to, you know, lifestyle changes. It's just so fulfilling to watch other people be so happy and joyful after making those changes. Awesome. So I think we talked a little bit about how being a cheerleader helped us with communication in our everyday jobs. Is there anything else that you all have learned from being a cheerleader that's helped you in your career? Time management is a huge one for me. Um, you know, I grew up similar to Coley and Ashley, you would go to school and then right afterwards you go to dance. And then after that, you would, you know, have to do your homework. And I grew up in a studio that really, really, you know, made sure that you got good grades and similar to Cardinals, they have always supported all of us in our academic endeavors. And they know that those things are so important. And so it taught me how to time manage and that, okay, I'm going to go to school. I'm going to go to dance right afterwards. And I know I need X, Y, Z thing done. And now I feel like, you know, with Ashley, she was going to grad school and she was working and she was also doing Cardinals. And now this year I'm back going to grad school as well. And I'm working full time as a nurse and was doing Cardinals. And it just showed me that there are a lot of small time increments in your day that make a huge difference if you use them wisely. And so I really feel like dance has just carried through my life with time management. And now I work in an ER where time is of the essence. And so it's helped me prioritize what's really important and what can maybe wait a couple minutes. And so I think that was a really valuable thing that I've learned from dancing and cheering my whole life is definitely time management. I was going to say the exact thing as Darby. I think it's probably a trend among all of us dancers and cheerleaders, but to do the things that we do, you know, just school and personal life and social life and, you know, just balance all of these things on top of having, you know, a great um, position with the Cardinals. It's really taught us how to prioritize our time. And I also would add discipline in there as well. Maybe that's something I didn't have when I was younger, but I kind of grew into that to be able to be more disciplined with myself and making sure that I'm giving my 100% in whatever I'm doing. And of course, yes, time management skills are probably the number one thing that we all use. And these are those types of life lessons that we kind of learn along the way and then take and apply to our careers later without even really realizing it. Where did I get these skills? Oh, it all stemmed from dance and how dedicated I was from that. But ultimately, I would like to say that I think having like just such a positive attitude and a good mindset has really helped um, my clients, the parents that I work with, different um, people that I encounter. I think they look to you and you know they're scared sometimes. They don't know what to do. They're looking to you for answers. And just having a smile on your face, being able to push through this adversity, being able to push through um, you know, hard times with a smile and just letting them know, we're gonna get through this, it's gonna be okay. Just that encouragement that I feel like just is fostered in us from cheering. Um, I really think that that is just something that you can't teach people. That's something that you really pick up on your own. And that's something that um, innately, I think we have as cheerleaders that um, takes us really far in our professional settings that most people just might not have it. <laughs> so true. There's so much value in 
in share that we don't even realize that helps us. We have a fun question popped in. Uh, what were your favorite toys or shows when you were little? And was there anything science related that inspired you to pursue STEM? So I loved Winnie the Pooh so much growing up. That was like my favorite movie. I loved the books. My bedroom was so Winnie the Pooh. Anything that was Winnie the Pooh related was one of my favorite things. But also kind of sounds kind of cheesy, but Bill Nye the Science Guy, I loved all of the videos and the experiments. And so my sister and I would always have really hands-on type of toys. So where you would be baking something or you'd be making slime or you'd watch, you know, the oil, you know, have a reaction with something or we would be building things. And so a lot of the toys that I had when I were younger, you were creating something and you were kind of creating a reaction, which I think also really made me love science because I've, I've truly loved science since I was in elementary school. And so I think some of those toys probably helped inspire that for sure. Um, whenever I was growing up, my brother loved playing with Legos. And I really think that he got my mom's engineering brain. Um, I got my dad's like analytical love to talk brain. So the combination of the two of us, when we would play, we would always race, you know, to build Legos. We would maybe go to McDonald's, get a happy meal and try to like, you know, figure it out who can put it together the fastest and just different ways that we could engage, you know, not Legos aren't just for girls. And I think trying to break these days that you know you can play with anything you want you can play with blocks or lincoln logs and a lot of times i've played with those types of you know science and engineering toys that are really meant to help spark that growth and spark that interest in kids and i think i'm very thankful for that um, experience playing with those toys with my brother and you know not being afraid to you know play with legos even though i was a girl <laughs> That's a great question. I would say I also had a brother growing up, so I would always try to play with him. And I thought it was so cool to be able to play with his Legos and linking logs. And I loved building things. And just even as simple as building like a fort as a family, I thought it was so fun to build a fort and just to all have like a sleepover in there. Um, but also I would say that I was a baby doll girl. And just to be able to play house and with caring for you know people in this family that I was taking care of and I think that's something that like I'm a very nurturing person that I've learned and um I was very gravitated towards baby dolls and so that was kind of my my go-to I think okay. kind of going off of that Coley pets were also really important in regards to like nurturing something and so like I said earlier my mom's a veterinarian and she did emergency veterinary medicine and there was a turtle that got brought in and I was in elementary school and the owner unfortunately ran over the turtle and couldn't care for it anymore. And so my mom reconstructed the turtle shell out of plexiglass and then brought the turtle home and told my sister and I that we were in charge of taking care of this turtle and that this turtle was going to be our turtle and we were going to learn to take care of it. And so Tilly, the turtle who is still alive to this day, had a feeding tube and we also had to give Tilly IV fluids and every day we soaked Tilly in water to help keep her hydrated. And so I learned when I was in elementary school how to do tube feeding on a turtle, how to poke in their armpit to give them IV fluids and how to just really care for something. And so Tilly was my baby when I was younger and it was a real life, you know, turtle. And so I think that really truly did carry over into my adult life now being a nurse is that I was in charge of a living, breathing thing. And it was my job to make sure Tilly did well. And Tilly is still alive. And that was like 20 years ago. <laughs> I think Tilly is actually in her 80s now, which is very impressive. But pets are important. <laughs> That's amazing. I love that your first nursing patient was a turtle. That's a great story. <laughs> um, and like Ashley, you were saying with the Legos, my, my dad growing up, never had real Legos. It was always, I guess there's fake Legos. And so when he had me, he was so excited to buy me real Legos. So I just had all these like Legos everywhere, whether or not they were marketed to girls, he didn't care. He just wanted to buy his kid Legos. And so that's how I learned how to build as well. 
So yeah, I've noticed that there has been a really big push in, you know, toy making and different things to market these types of toys to girls because it's not just for boys. And I specifically stock my speech room with, uh, you know, pink Legos and different things like that because I want to engage these kids at a young age because the things like having them click together, it's just like so satisfying and I really love seeing their creativity. Some of my most favorite memories with my students is just giving them free time and letting them play with Legos and watching the things that they can create with, you know, just their imaginations is absolutely mind blowing sometimes. Yeah, totally. Speaking of memories, do any of you have a favorite memory of working in STEM? All of my, you know, favorite memories of being a nurse truly surround around like specific patients. And there are some people that come back and they thank you for the care that they received and really just kind of comes full circle that, you know, we really are a big part of people's lives. And although the encounter may seem like just one day at work for me, I know that I am a page in their book for the rest of their life. And so that's one of my favorite things about being in STEM, but two, something that's really, really special to me is global health. And I've had the opportunity to travel to Haiti a few times now to provide nursing care. And one of my favorite things is just to see how much they're flourishing now. We have a clinic out there that is a year round clinic that goes every single weekend where people are able to receive care. It's not just when we're physically there, you know, a couple times a year. And it really brings me a lot of joy and a lot of pride that they are just flourishing so well and they have the resources they need because they're such smart, wonderful people who are so well educated. And, you know, it's really rewarding to see that just with giving people resources, how much they can do. So empowering other people and then just seeing full circle stories with patients and their families has really always been my favorite part about being a nurse. I've noticed a lot in working in elementary schools that there is a big push for STEM and they will offer STEM classes and different things like teaching kids how to code. Um, all these different things are, you know, becoming more and more prevalent careers for our young, you know, future American kiddos that we have. Um, and I really am excited to see all the different things. I feel like technology has absolutely taken off. And that's one of the reasons that I chose not to choose audiology because I felt like technology is advancing so fast. Like there's no way that you're going to get, you know, you could probably adjust someone's hearing aid from if Cox can, you know, adjust my TV from over the phone, then, you know, I'm sure someone could adjust the hearing aid over the phone too. And I really feel like there's no substitution for that true social interaction, but I do love seeing that there is a huge push for STEM in the schools, teaching kids how to code. And also, um, you know, one of my most rewarding memories that I have is really fighting for um, getting some students uh, technology devices, whether they be um, maybe like an iPad with, you know, a communication device on them and being able to facilitate that communication, the social interaction along with, you know, through the means of technology. It's kind of similar to how we're having this right now. You know, we could be having this in person, but we're over here on technology and it's, you know, our world is changing and our times are changing. And I just think that it's just such a amazing field to get into that everyone should jump on it. One of my favorite memories in uh, my STEM career would just be working with a specific client um, that was a little while back and she just had these ambitions and goals and never thought that she could see herself different from who she was in that current state. And just from working together and just kind of holding her hand and coming alongside her, watching her make these slow lifestyle changes and just kind of fast forwarding to today, we still keep in touch and she sends me family Christmas cards and email updates on her life and just the happiness that she's received. So just to know that I was that person who just, you know, got her through that, that journey and she's still um, carrying on to everything that she's publishing today. Awesome. Um, Coley, what's your favorite 
memory being a cheerleader so far? Oh my gosh, that's such a great question. The friendships, I would say, definitely stands out for me. But if I had, I'd probably have to pick two, but I would have to say the friendships, um, just the quality of girls that you're surrounded by every single day are people that were, you know, at my wedding and watched me get married. And um, I'm just so incredibly grateful that I know that I have lifelong friends and we're supporting each other in our career and the next steps in life together. And then memory wise, as far as wearing the uniform and just feeling so proud that it's taken so many years of dedication and auditions and, you know, dance competitions and everything leading up to it. But just to take the walking um, onto the field, we walk through a ramp and to run out on this um, into the stadium all together is like, you just want to relive that moment over and over. And that's something that I'll probably never forget. And although this year, this last year was very different, I still felt that spark in me that you know, even though I'm not on the field right now, I still feel like I am because I'm surrounded by the girls. That's awesome. I would say the friendships, of course, like it can't be said enough times, the quality of women that are on the team are just exceptional. Uh, but too, kind of going along that, I think there's just something so special about seeing my family at games or seeing my family at appearances. I can just like truly feel in my heart how proud my parents are of me and just they're so happy for me, the friendships that I've made. And when they meet my friends, I can just like see in my sweet dad's eyes, just all the pride in the world and every game, dad and my mom and my dad would stand up and wave to me. And there's just something that really touches your heart about seeing your family at game day, like it never gets old. And it always like it just like, oh, gets you right in the heart. But if I could pick like a specific memory, it was really special last year. Um, in February, I was able to travel to Hawaii and Alaska to go to different military bases um, to just bring cheer to them during the Super Bowl. And it was so incredible to see what goes into serving our country and what service means to them and how you know, they serve in their every single day life and they put down the ultimate sacrifice. And so it was really inspiring to be able to see what the men and women in the U.S. military do for us and for our country. And I know Ashley also went on that same trip to different countries. She can probably speak to, too. But that was really special to be able to get a closer inside look at what the military does. Yeah, I think I have the same favorite memory, actually, going to military base on my time there. Yes, that is definitely one that stands out above all else. You know, any sort of trip is going to be so memorable. And obviously traveling with your teammates, it brings you even closer to them and makes those bonds even stronger. Um, whenever I went on my tour, I was able to go to Greenland, Honduras, and El Salvador. So I was able to go from you know, basically the North Pole to really, really hot. You know, it was a very crazy trip. And, you know, seeing the different technology that they have um, and that they are using to protect us every single day, it, it's just mind blowing. You, you really like can't even wrap your head around it. And I just think that it just keeps going and everything keeps getting better and better. And I know several, you know, servicemen and women who are engineers who are in the Air Force and, you know, different things like that, how they did have to use their degrees to, you know, get their dream job of serving their country and protecting us ultimately, bringing them cheer and being able to, you know, put a smile on their face, throw them a Super Bowl party, you know, sign some autographs. I mean, we do hardly anything compared to them, but they still, they use the technology and the science and they're, they're way ahead of all of us, you know, with everything that they do. But I'm just so thankful for them. And I just say that that is definitely a standout memory for me. Um, another one that I have is um, one time I was at an appearance and there was a very large deaf community there and I was able to use some of the sign language that I learned in undergrad to communicate with them and I really felt like that kind of broke down a communication barrier for us and showed them that, you know, we we're more than just a pretty face. We're more than just dancers or Cardinals fans and so are they. And um, I really enjoyed, you know, 
being able to use my skills that I've learned and worked so hard for at an appearance in order to connect with our fans. That's so cool. I bet that was a really fun appearance and a great way to connect. So before we wrap up, I want to see if you guys can help me out with a go science cheer. So we're just going to go, go science. All right. And five, six, seven, eight. Go science. Thank you all so much. It was such a pleasure to have the Arizona Cardinals cheerleaders here today. And everyone be sure to follow us at at the Psy Cheers on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And we will post tons of updates of all our Psy Cheer checks and tune in next month for our next one. Thank you all so much.